it's funny. The, um, I met someone at this literary conference in the States in March, and he has a, a book about a, a book of introductions to poems, just the introduction. And it's absolutely hilarious. See, yes, and then that, that's when my dad broke his leg, and he had the tractor fit, and you know, I was just thinking, and by the time the person got to reading the poem about the dad and the tractor, you think, no, oh, God, no, it can't possibly be as good as the intro was. It was just these, I think that's such a great idea. And then somebody would then say, oh God, who's, uh, who is this? Our people didn't tell me I had to introduce this guy. <laughs> However, since Patrick goes back over 20 years with Salmon, and has been one of our absolute, as well as an incredibly versatile poet and versatile writer indeed. And uh, we share a kind of love of science fiction, but he's been more hands-on in the, oh, that sounds strange. No, I don't, I don't mean communing with aliens. <laughs> I mean actually working on, you know, Doctor Who and some other, other, other BBC things. And um, so he's got the title, Open Season on the Moon, reminds me of that. And it's the same thing of bringing is he bring you with poets who, who continue to publish and who are at their careers, making their careers. They, tend, they, they do bring everything with them. But each time it's something new to look, you know, to look at the, in a new way. And so you'd never, someone who's very committed to their work, there's never a regression. I've never seen anyone go backwards because they're always striving. And yet what they've learned and what they've seen and what they've done uh, comes into the new, the new poems. And in a well, you know, it's just kind of, and he's gone a bit crazy, you know, with this stuff. Um, I didn't say that, but um, anyway, all to say that Patrick Chapman is among the favorites of our poets, and for lots of reasons, and he is an extremely adept and talented poet. <laughs> for that extraordinary opening <laughs> I think should go into a book of the next volume of Yeah, the, the next of volume of intros, yeah. The trouble with being experimental in this book, because I've got my hands on typesetting technology, um, <laughs> is that it's difficult to read it. It's very, <laughs> it's the, it strays into the area of visual art as well, if I can use the word art. And so I'm not going to read this one. But um, I have enough here that I can read, so I hope they're an entertaining bunch of poems. Um, this one starts 20-something years ago when I thought I'd write a poem about David Lynch, because I heard an anecdote about his producer who had given him her uterus when she'd had her hysterectomy, and she, he, she thought he would like that. And of course he did. Um, <clears throat> but I didn't finish the poem. It was supposed to go into the new pornography, actually, 26 something years ago. <laughs> and I found the old draft recently, and I thought, oh, that's a good idea. But I wrote a new poem based on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Jeez Louise. And to be read in the voice of David Lynch, which I could do a really good impersonation. Jeez Louise. Thank you for your uterus. I keep it in a bell jar on a shelf in the workshop. It's a beautiful thing, an object of organic art no more unusual to me than my routine of ordering the chocolate shake in a silver goblet and five or six strong sugar-charged coffees at the same Nogahide booth in the same Bob's Big Boy at the same time every day for seven years. I open myself, the curtains part, the fish fly in to thrill my soul and a woman in trouble stomps on stage. Jeez Louise, she sings, just give the organ to someone who can use it. So I tell her the uterus wants to be here, but she shuts me down with a finger shaped like an eel to her lips and reminds me that I am a series of stills not long in projection, three reels shown one time only, like the producer who has given me her womb. Thank you for your uterus, Raffaella. I too will lose the plot device that introduces characters. I smile and stir my seventh cup of coffee. The rabbits listen for the deer to tell them where the owls have flown. Here come the fish. Here come the big, beautiful mackerel of dreams. 
Um, this is a, I saw these items for sale on the internet and I thought, what if you could buy them in a market as well? And uh, it's called A Model. To please a woman who will love it, you buy a perfect set of eight human fetal skulls at a Christchurch market stall. These crania, displayed in drops of clear lucite, you will fashion into an orrery for her to wear as a hat, her lovely head, the sun. This gift will correct her impression of your soul as a fragmented concatenation of nothings. Within each individual boundary may be signs of industry that no one has observed. Now, when you get the objects home, you hear her voice on the machine. The solar system goes in the bin. And 25 weeks is Mercury. 27 weeks is Venus. 29 weeks is Earth. 31 weeks is Mars. 33 weeks is Saturn. 35 weeks is Jupiter. 37 weeks is Uranus. 39 weeks is Neptune. Um, another one inspired by film. Years ago, I was in New Orleans and in a bar on a very hot day, and the people behind the bar started to play. They took out water pistols and started shooting at everyone. And the, I thought, what if the characters from the, the Powell and Pressburger film, The Red Shoes, were in that scenario? So this is called Vicky and Julian at Lafitte's. In her teal bodice and romantic tutu, Vicky works the till. She has scraped her flaming hair into a bun that some would call severe. Julian, débarrasseur, swans in. He beseeches her to skip this dive, elope with him. She sighs, I shall not marry any man, for all I ever wanted was to dance. Vicky serves a customer, then goes to the cellar. She returns with an armful of guns, water pistols loaded. I have hundreds in my armory, she says, then shoots almost hitting Julian. Her suitor falls away to brood. She breaks the weapons out. The patrons get busy, firing at will, dodging spray, taking hits, bodies thrown about the room in a rite of apocalypse. What a gun-happy lot here in the old pirate's blacksmith shop bar as the mercury pushes 104, but the barmaid is cooler than anything. Julian, struck by a stray drop, drop a tear, perhaps, from Vicky's gun is flung through a plate glass window. He spears his torso on a shard. Technicolor blood gushes to the floor, forming the outline of two crimson pumps. The room falls silent. Victoria's eyes become star lost. Gazing on Julian, buried in fragments, the dancer remembers the last time when it was her. Some cheerful stuff in there. Um, some decades back, like, well, months, years, I hit 50 and I wrote a poem in advance of that um, called L. Now that you are losing skin and hair and sap, like a radiation subject, sickened by the shine of the vital, shooting past you with their fucking and enthusiastic light. Carefree as a particle, ignoring the screen between two slits, then coming out of both at once. It is time you screwed it to your head, the hat at the drop of which you used to fall in love. And from personal decay to the death of the planet, this one's called the Archivist. Yours is the last generation for whom it will be possible to die of old age. Your children and their offspring, let's not trouble them with this. I record my note for no posterity, nor for the idea of posterity, which we understand in terms of years at best. Milton suddenly unspurred. Would he have persisted? That is my task. I'm putting everything into the memory vault, so that whatever succeeds us, Though it be unfathomable, and our artifacts invulnerable to its comprehension, it will see that something was here before it. We, whatever that might mean, were here. Okay. 
Um, last year was a bad year for poets um, that we knew. Um, people, <coughs> Philip Casey, passed away, McDowell Woods, and Matthew Sweeney. And before hearing of Philip's death in February, um, I wrote this poem. So it's not actually about anybody in particular, but it seemed in retrospect to be written in advance of their passing. It's called Corpse Flower, which is a kind of flower that is very stinky, um, hence the name. But it's, it's Corpse Flower. Um, it's, it's February 1st, 2018. You turn up dead again, old friend, having drawn the sky down to where blue like a veil composed of gas, your cold meat insisting on a few hours more of seeming alive, with no sign of decomposition. Yet who in a week will say that you are here, let alone what volume you displaced? For a whole world must go on and you must not. See it, hear it, touch it, taste it, smell it. Please tell, if you can, what senses you are missing now that you did not know you had. Too late you breathe your veil in deep, then expel it, shallowing. All inspiration may cease, but won't. Only yours, only now, nothing. Mm -hmm.